It is interesting to watch the words spreading through physics circles online about the plasma cosmology movie, and now to the professors too. We have received a number of responses to the video, and a number of them took a very open position, and a positive one. Mostly it was the professors and scientists who were aware of how many assumptions and guesses and failures surround the current paradigm and the modeling. But here, I want to share four professor responses in the negative, meaning they did not immediately express any openness to the idea at all. Now, three of the four are professors to whom we should still give the utmost respect, and we will show why. And the fourth is one that fully exemplifies the mindset emblematic of, indicative of, so many of those furthering an endless goose chase and grant funding black hole. We begin with Professor Bailey at Embry-Riddle, very kind, very respectful. His primary argument surrounded the concept that such a video does not really meet the standard for serious consideration by the community at large. It should be a scientific paper. A few responses to this. First, we showed nothing but peer-reviewed science from professors and the national labs. To put this all together would be closer to a volume of books rather than a paper. Consider that the 5 to 30 second videos resulting from some studies that we show every day in the news represent months to years of work and sometimes more than a dozen pages in the paper. Could you imagine doing this for everything in that 69 minute movie? Alas, it was a literature review, a peer reviewed literature review. He also made comment that we should be able to see the plasma and dust and we don't. Now that was the key point of another professor. Professor Delianis at Indiana. He further added that we even looked for more of the massive objects like dwarf stars, but those came up empty too. Well, sadly, this is where that impossibility of a professor keeping up with all of the journals and the up to 200 new papers a day comes into play. Here, we show on a daily basis the dust and plasma discovered in plain sight. The newest proposed instruments are expressly expected to reveal more of this material, like the lost light of Hubble, which is still missing from models even though that paper was published six months ago. Now these new instruments mean we do not yet see it all, or there's no reason for them. Now as for the massive objects, again we see these stories coming out all the time. Just this morning in our daily program we showed this, ALMA not only revealing supermassive galaxies hiding in plain sight, hiding from Hubble, but their abundance in the early universe is way too high for the current dark matter model to explain. That's why it was one of the top stories in the morning news. That's two ways the notion that we see it all is wrong, and one expressly contradicts the accepted paradigm of science. Up next we go to Professor Watson from Manchester. Another very kind and respectful response. Now this guy might be a little sharper than the other tools in the bag immediately pulled out one of the remaining questions to be answered by plasma cosmology, the perceived abundance ratios of hydrogen to helium to lithium in the cosmos. Few things. First, unanswered questions better not be the rubric, otherwise standard cosmology is first in line to get the axe. Second, this conundrum is nowhere near as glaring or as problematic for the paradigm as a whole as the problems that the standard model has. Third, this conundrum only exists if we see everything, account for everything, and their interactions, a claim I don't see how anyone could make. Still, a very good example of a brilliant, hardworking, respectful professor here. And then there is Brad. Brad Gibson from Hull. That's in England. This man was somewhat less than courteous, especially when I emailed him back and the words delusional and nonsense started coming out. On to his arguments. First, he said that plasma cosmology had been debunked, which technically isn't all that different from saying, we don't see the plasma and dust, which the other three professors did say, but forgetting the fact that its discovery is still ongoing, as we mentioned in the movie and as we show here every day on the news, he is referring to Jim Peebles in 1993 and the thwarting of the plasma dissidents to mainstream cosmology. Yes, we did directly address that part in the movie, not sure he watched that part, and obviously, the discoveries are ongoing in that realm too, photon and CMB ranges. He then suggested that 
Illustrious does have everything that we said it didn't as a simulation. The newly discovered dust and plasma and star-to-star -star interactions up to galaxy clusters, things like the radio bridges and plasma filaments. Remember how they spiraled down, feeding the galaxies, including the outer regions where the lost luminous matter light of Hubble resides and co-rotates with the galaxy? No, Illustris has none of that. It's months to years behind the newest discoveries. And by the way, even those most incredible simulations do not do the full scales of interaction. And these interactions cannot be ignored when contributing to the bigger picture. By the way, we reported this paper in the morning news too. We do this every day. There is no shortage of evidence or failure from dark matter searches. Then his true colors showed. Here we have a government scientist in our movie, two national labs. Al Fain's number one guy wrote two books on cosmic plasma physics, worked at the DOE. And Gibson claims Peratt simply made it up, claims no such experiments exist, and no secret knowledge was gained. Well, it would be one thing to be skeptical of Peratt's claims right off the bat, but to outwardly call him a liar to other people is stepping far out of line, especially given Peratt's vastly more impressive resume. He actually used the word criminal to describe Peratt at one point. Gibson even says he works with people at Los Alamos, and so he would know. First, and I'm going to play the assumption game that mainstream cosmologists love to play. Let's go ahead and assume he watched enough of the movie to know Peratt did this decades ago, was exploding nukes when Gibson's current colleague still had acne. Then we'll presume his colleagues at Los Alamos are privy to that information now. I'll further presume that this guy isn't a jerk on a normal basis, his colleagues like him, and that he took the time to ask them about this before responding to us. Guess what? even with all those assumptions. It's United States classified information. That means not for you. And not for me, either. We just get the comments of someone who helped kickstart energy projects and technologies mistaken for UFOs on a weekly basis. Things like this dark matter. It's beneath their care at this point. We get what we get. Something further to mention, it's not just the plasma and the dust and the massive objects that are being discovered, and it's not just that the actual observations are conflicting with Lambda CDM expectations. There is the glaring, insurmountable truth of what happened at Enceladus. For those who missed it and missed the Plasma Cosmology movie, first, go watch it. It's linked below this video. Second, in short, they flew Cassini right through the electric currents in the South Pole water jet, Comparing Langmuir probe to magnetometer readings, they missed 95% of the electric current, in situ, right there, inside of it. The reason was the dust, which they also didn't see very well until they got right there to measure it, and even then, it was hiding the plasma on itself. 95% missed in situ. How much electricity do we see in deep space? None of it. Absolutely none of it. By the way, I have heard the argument before that it was not a cosmological study they did at Saturn's moon, and so it doesn't count. More to come, literally every day. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.